look here, man, what we doing here. See, Chopin and them, they, and Bach and Beethoven and Liszt and all of them, they goofed on us. They stopped showing us how to improvise, mm -hmm. which was a big blunder. Mm -hmm. And see, what happened is, improvisation, one, one theorist over in Europe, one theorist over in Europe, you know what he told me? He said, when the improvisation stopped in Europe, it started in the USA. Mm. So, and see what happened is, most of the artists, the ones who really studied uh, how to figure the bass and all that stuff that leads to improvisation, they came over here. Mm -hmm. So they, they came to the USA, they fell in love with our stuff because it was easy. You know, they could write tea for do, tea for do. Oh, these are pretty little songs, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. and see, that's why most of the standards are really correct. Mm. That's why everybody sort of avoids standards, but standards, everybody better learn the standards. Then they'll learn what Coleman Hawkins, you know, Coleman Hawkins, when I worked with him, he told me, he said, I don't play chords, I play movements. Mm. I understand it now. Play movements, not chords. Mm. Of course, it's just part of the thing. Mm -hmm. Movement. Movement. Like See, yeah. could have been different too. Do it again. It also could be watch this. Do that. <laughs> to like G G, like like a, a G triad. No, but have the G there. Double the G. No, but see, you don't double the dilly. See that? Don't double so much. Yeah. No, no, just no. That. Oh, okay. Oh, go to the A. That would sound better. Oh, okay. See, those cats, they knew something about this stuff, man. <laughs> Back to that diminish. Play that diminish. Yes. You know what? That's why our standard, our standard songs really teaches us. Wow. That's why we play what is this thing called love? All these tunes came. Not all of them came from European composers, because we had composers out on Broadway that would sell a song for $25 so they could eat, right, you know. Right. So we don't know who composed what. Right. You know, some people that we'll say, oh, so-and-so composed that, but we don't know that. Mm -hmm. It's not all true, mm -hmm. you know, so we have to take everything with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard that Which about Fast Waller. He sold a lot yeah, of his songs. Yeah, sure, right? you know. Yeah. So we don't know, we don't really know who wrote what. Mm -hmm. And some, some things we can tell. I, could, I think George Gershwin wrote Man I Love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds so like him. And uh, it's a couple more things. They, they George Gershwin things, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think George Gershwin knew enough about jazz, mm -hmm. even though he wrote the Rhapsody in Blue, you know. I've never heard really, I've never heard somebody who really knew about jazz write a composition for the Philharmonic Orchestra. Nobody. I started working on one now because I got a bass player who is with the Philharmonic Orchestra who comes to my class. Oh, David. Right. David. Yeah. I'm crazy about him. Mm. Played the piano better than the average piano player, you know. Mm. But see, I started working on it because it's just so much. See, the piano, people think the piano is like the orchestra, but the piano can't be like the orchestra. The orchestra. The orchestra is layers of music, mm. you know, like layers where the piano is just this, right here, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. You can't lay, you know, you can't do it like, like an orchestra. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I would, I, I, I don't suggest that you write a symphony looking at the piano keyboard. Mm. Nowadays, these cats, they got this computer madness. Mm. They write their songs looking at the computer. Johnny Griffin, when I played with him, he had a ninth major song, <laughs> 11th major song. I don't want to hear that, you know. Mm -hmm. You could tell he made it up on the computer, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But see now, so far what we got, we got the two old tone scales. Right. And now we got the three diminished sevens. Mm -hmm. 
and they in that 12. Look at it. See, no higher than those 12. So we got to know this. Yeah. Now, Schoenberg said something that we had to pay particular attention to. He said, the first thing he writes about in his book, he says, I like to write about the human voice. So he wrote about the bass, the tenor, the alto, and the soprano. So soprano, you hit that chord, you hit the chord, C dimension seven. He said four voices. That top voice is the soprano. Mm -hmm. The next one down is the alto. The next one down is the tenor. And next one is the bass. And so I give it, I give it a thing. I say soprano is one. Alto is two, tenor is three, bass is four. So the first thing I'm going to say is drop two. There you go. Then I'm going to say, oh, go back. Drop three, drop three. See, all these things make sense. Mm -hmm. Then I might say, go back. Drop two, four. There you go. All this stuff makes sense. Mm -hmm. See, you can make up a song with that one. You know what you do? Run, run it up. Run, run from the, no, run from the bottom one note at a time. Go up a half step. No, but you're gonna come down that one. Do it, do it again. Up. <laughs> you, make up, you make up a whole song like that. For sure could. That's, and that's just, now we come to what Schoenberg, see, you got to know about drop one, drop two, drop three, right. drop four, and all this kind of stuff. Right. And so then we begin to learn. I might even tell you to drop, you know, here's a weird one. Drop two and three. Drop two and three, so that's two and three, and then come down again. There it is. Run that one to see what it sounds like. That's, this is why, let me tell you, this is why I say jazz is the continuation of classical theory. Mm -hmm. 